Greetings everyone. I'm Karen Jane Casey and this is Turn to God with Karen. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul to thee. In Turn to God with Karen, my message for listeners is to encourage overcoming as we face unwanted challenges in life. We can always turn to God, whether we're brokenhearted, overwhelmed, and when we're filled with gratitude. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, King of the universe, because your loving kindness is better than life, our lips will praise you. You are our strength and our refuge. We are filled with gratitude, humility at the miracles that you worked in our lives. We cast our cares on you. We fear no evil, for you are always with us. We pray faithfully. We strive to obey you consistently. And as we submit to you, Lord, we believe that you answer our prayers in our petitions, in your perfect will and your perfect timing. We ask that you save, heal, and protect our loved ones, our friends, and even our community in our country and our enemies. Because we know with God all things are possible. Please forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Thank you for your unconditional love, compassion, and mercy. Your grace comes through Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. My hope is that you will have, uh, you will turn to God continually throughout your life. Well, this is the fourth week, I believe, in our series. As you know, may know, October is designated as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And during that time, we study the process of overcoming challenges and finding victory. And in that process, we must always have hope for healing. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit if you missed my previous segments, you can find them under these titles, Find Victory, Turn, Be Safe, and Believe, Gratitude. Here's what I call my recipe for overcoming or finding victory. Turn to God, safely leave that dangerous, toxic environment, to have faith and believe, be thankful, be filled with gratitude and to forgive ourselves and others. So today we'll be relating to the fifth step with, with our segment titled, Forgive Us. Forgive us. Forgive ourselves and forgive our abusers, our adversaries. First, we need to take a critical look at ourselves and see what, what we find there. And that can be very hard. If we don't see any way that we brought this whole thing on ourselves, then maybe we didn't. We all know that bad stuff can happen in this world. We can pray for God to show us if there is anything that we, anything that we have thought, we said, or we've done that we need to repent of. And when we ask Him, He will show us. When I ask sometimes, he shows me a dream of what I did, like a movie or a video, with every detail in it, more like a nightmare. So I may ask him sometimes, just show me the videos, Lord. I've already shared my testimony and at the beginning of this series, child abuse leading it up to domestic violence as an adult, after a failed relationship, I found myself alone, and I had turned my back on God. We have free will, you know. We can make big mistakes, and I did. Then I found myself entrapped with a very cunning and charismatic man. I had allowed an evil person to come into my life. This person was online with the enemy, the devil himself. He wanted to destroy me in every way possible, and he even tried to kill me. When I was at the very bottom of that pit, I fell to my knees and I cried out to God. 
I was desperate, humble, and ashamed of my sins that I had brought, that had brought me to that point. And I knew, as we all know, there are consequences for our choices. We reap what we sow. I knew I deserved nothing from God as I appealed to Him. This was the right attitude, being broken, humble, like Daniel when he turned to God in Daniel 10. I came to the Lord for forgiveness, rescue, and for my salvation in Jesus. I turned back to God for His love, His mercy, and His compassion, and I immediately received His forgiveness. But my escape from that life-threatening situation was not immediate. There was a period for me to exercise my patient faith while I waited for the answered prayer. Again, this is like da Daniel in Daniel 10. The angel of God was dispatched to rescue Daniel from the moment that God heard him, his petition. But it took the angel of God 21 days of fighting evil forces to get to Daniel and rescue him. And during that 21 days, Daniel exercised patient faith. What if I hadn't cried out to the Lord when I did? What if I had waited to decide to turn to God the next day? What if I lived one more day? We don't know. What I do know is that Jesus was waiting for me to come to him. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come to him. So let's look at the parable of the prodigal son that Jesus shared in Luke 15. In the prodigal son parable, a man had two sons. The younger son demanded that his father give him his inheritance, and, and then he left home. The son wasted his inheritance with riotous living. One day, while this son was at his very lowest point, starving while he worked a job feeding pigs, and he decided to go back to his father to humbly ask forgiveness, to repent, and to ask if he could be one of the father's servants. But how did his father respond? He rejoiced. Luke 15, 22 through 24. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is now found, and they began to be merry. This is how God feels about us. Can we let go of our sins? Well, there's a step in it that we must do yet. We need to be willing to forgive our enemies, those who were abusive, our adversaries, Harboring our own unforgiveness is part of that sinful package that we want to give to the Lord in repentance. Hmm. That may sound shocking to you, to think of forgiving an enemy. In Luke 6, 37, it says, To be forgiven, we must forgive. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall, not, shall be forgiven. We don't need to take revenge on our enemies, but we do need to forgive them. We can give it to God. Vengeance is not ours. Romans 12, 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. And in James 1, 19-20, we're told to be slow to wrath, slow to offense, and to forgive. And you know this is for our own soul's sake. God is not like the villains or the adversaries in our lives. He is love, unconditional love. He wants to be part of our lives. In John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's unconditional love. And then following that, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No man comes to the Father but through me. So we know that God invites us to come to him. When and how we respond to that is up to us. Can you pray with me right now? Dear God, I know that I've messed my life up and I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I can forgive my enemies and I do forgive them. I know Jesus died on the cross and he rose again and he defeated death. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior and I ask you now to come into my heart for my salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Once we're sin we sincerely pray for God's forgiveness, we receive his mercy. There's no reason then for us to continue kicking ourselves over the past. When you think about it, God remembers it no more, so we can also forgive ourselves. So whenever there is strife in our lives, we can cast our cares on the Lord. He cares for us. We can give it all, give all that ugly stuff, all the bad, painful memories, the past offenses. We can give it all to God. It's not any of our business anymore. We can let him deal with it in his perfect way, in his perfect timing. Whenever we, we are reminded of those things of the past, then we can immediately start praying and praising the Lord in Jesus' name and replace those terrible thoughts with gratitude. That does work. Psalms 55, 22. Cast your burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. When I speak about forgiving an abuser, the adversary, or the enemy, I'm not at all talking about going back to that toxic environment, back to that mean-spirited person. I always like to use this example so I can get my point across. If you get into a boat with your enemy and you ride out into the water together, they try to drown you, and then somehow you manage to make it back to shore, and you do the right thing, you forgive them, does that mean that you have to get back into the boat and ride out into the water with them again? Of course not. Forgiveness can happen miles away. They don't even have to know that you have forgiven them because it's something in your heart. Besides that, contacting them may be dangerous for you. We forgive for our soul's sake because that is what our Creator wants of us. What's the point in laying up in bed, fretting about what they did? They did this, they did that, feeling, being filled with revenge and hate. They're having a good night's sleep. Forgive and let it go. I'm going to read a short portion to you from my first novel, My Dear Rosa Jean. And this piece seems appropriate. Rosa Jean is sharing a dream that she had with her aunt, and that's on page 240. One time, when I was in a relationship that wasn't working out, and while I prepared for bed, I prayed about it. I asked, oh God, I just don't understand. I love him and I'm good to him. Why can't he simply love me like I love him? And then I fell asleep. I dreamed of a scene with this man as the main character who seemed to have an angry and indifferent attitude. I stood in a line to ask for and to receive his love. But to my surprise, I was not the only person in that line waiting for love. There were others also seeking for his love. And with amazement, I saw Jesus himself in that same line ahead of me. And I realized, it's not about me. We each have free will to accept Jesus into our hearts or not. And that's of primary importance. And we each have free will who we may or may not accept us in our hearts as well. It's about the condition of their heart. It's not about me. Remember what Christ went through. He was rejected. He was ridiculed, mistreated, 
betrayed, and tortured by those that he loved. He does understand, and he can fully relate to your personal sufferings. You are not alone. Each morning brings a new day filled with new possibilities, including new opportunities to meet nice, loving people who you can bond with. So that points out that when another person is unable or unwilling to care about you, we can say it's not about me. What is it in each of our hearts, our minds, only we know and only God knows? As in Proverbs 23, 7, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Before we close this segment today, I want to read this scripture that has been very helpful to me. Maybe it'll be a helpful to you as well. I hope so. The battle is God's, not ours. Second Chronicles 20, 15 and 17. Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid or dismayed because of this. For the battle is not yours, but God's. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, who is with you. And in Hebrews 13, 5, Jesus tells us he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Psalms 147, 3. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. If you ever find yourself in a domestic violence situation, please know that you are not alone, it is not your fault, and you can get help. The National Domestic Violence Hotline number is 1-800-799-7233. Safe. Well, I hope you enjoyed my podcast today. This is Karen Jane Casey, author, speaker, domestic violence advocate, and ambassador for Christ. Stay tuned for Turn to God with Karen every Monday morning at 6.30 a.m. and Abundant Living with Karen every Tuesday morning at 7. Both are Eastern Standard Time. You can download and listen anytime. And you can simply Google the podcast name and find them on the internet. Both of these podcasts are with Storm Talk 365 Radio. We're also available on iTunes, Twitter, and Alexa on Amazon. Hosted by iHeartRadio and Spotify. There's a few ways you can contact me. My website, www.KarenJaneCasey.com C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y you can go to the website, www.stormtalk365radio.com. I have a Facebook page, Karen Jane Casey. I have Facebook fan pages that match the podcast, Turn to God with Karen, C-A-R-I-N, and Abundant Living with Karen. I have an author page at Amazon.com. I want you to know that I strive to educate and encourage people to conquer life's challenges. And I do this because I'm a survivor of domestic violence. And as I recovered, my gratitude motivated me to write books, to do podcasts, because I want to, others to gain tools and resources to fight the demons in their lives and defeat whatever is holding them back from abundant life. My dear Rosa Jean, fiction, Christian, suspense, about the process of overcoming and finding victory. M Mystery at Candace Bay, fiction, adult, young adult, and mystery. It's a page turner, and it includes tools for healing, the healing process. Granny babysits the mischievous five, children's chapter book, Lots of fun. It promotes patience. All of my books are at Amazon.com, Kindle, and Barnes & Noble Note. I have an email. I hope that you will contact me with any suggestions or feedback. And that's KarenJaneCasey at gmail.com. 
C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y. Trust in the Lord and do good. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Thank you, and God bless.